There once was a boy named Doug that liked to go out into the woods. One day he came up to three lightweight backpacking chairs. The first one was very light, but it wasn't very comfortable, and it seemed to wobble all over the place. This one is too wobbly and uncomfortable, he said. So he tried the next chair. This one was a lot more comfortable, but it wasn't quite perfect, and it cost a lot of money. Too expensive for me, said Doug. Then he tried the third chair. It felt just right. It was very comfortable and didn't hardly wobble at all. And the price was right, but it was so heavy. He didn't know what to do. Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Today, I want to tell you that I am about sick of looking at ultralight backpacking chairs. A couple videos back, I detailed my purge and purchase gear upgrade for 2022, but the one thing that I didn't upgrade was my camp chair. Now, I know a camp chair is a major luxury item, but most of the backpacking trips that I go on are luxury type backpacking trips where I'm not trying to through hike and kill 20 miles a day and have to have my pack weight down beneath 20 pounds or something. And so when I backpack, it's often to spend some time in camp. And when I do, I don't want to be sitting on a rock or up against a tree. I want a legitimate chair. Now, when I first got back into backpacking, the chair that I picked was this. This is the Sun Year Camp Chair. I don't think it even has a model number or anything. It's a $30 chair, and it weighs about two pounds, and it's been fine for me. Fairly comfortable and not terribly heavy, but I figured since I was doing this big gear upgrade this year, the chair was really the last of the really kind of heavy, important items that I wanted to upgrade. And so I got online and I did my research and it took about four and a half seconds to find out that really for a major upgrade from this, there were really only two major contenders. The first one was this. This is the Helinox Chair Zero. This is a 17 ounce chair, very lightweight and very expensive. It runs about $130, but it does cut the weight in half. Now, the Helinox Chair Zero is pretty much the undisputed king of backpacking chairs, but there is a pretty serious contender on the market now, and that is the REI FlexLite Air. The FlexLite Air weighs one ounce less. This is a legit single pound, 16 ounce chair. It is a little bit smaller, but it is also quite a bit less expensive, coming in at an even hundred bucks. Now, if you know me, I'm all about stats and details, and I love knowing all of the figures that go along with a piece of gear, but a camp chair is a little bit different. Even if everybody on the planet liked one chair better than the other, that doesn't mean that I'm going to. How tall you are, how wide you are, the way you like to sit, the kinds of things you want to be able to do in your chair, all of those have a major effect on how well the chair is going to perform for you, and you might be surprised at the outcome. For me, there were really three main things that were going to be important. The price, the weight, and the comfort. Now, I had a good time measuring all the angles and seat heights and everything else and getting some good objective data on these chairs, but how exactly those chairs created that comfort or how the different materials changed the weight, in the end, it didn't really matter that much. So even though I had all of that data and objectively I could say this is better than this and that is better than that, at the end of the day, I've got to sit in this chair and I've got to carry this chair. And if I'm going to bring along a luxury item, I don't want it weighing so much that it hurts my hiking ability, and I don't want it to be so uncomfortable that it loses its purpose once I'm in camp. So because both of these chairs come in at roughly the same weight and they're not terribly different in price, I knew that I was going to have to sit in both of them to see what I thought, and I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. Set the chairs up, sit down, pick the one that's most comfortable, and I'd be done with it. Wrong. Both of them have pretty significant pluses 
and pretty significant minuses, and they don't really parallel each other very well. So it's not so much that I'm trying to determine which one is better in a certain area, but rather which areas are most important to me because these chairs have such radically different strengths and weaknesses. So for example, the first time that I sat down in the REI FlexLite Air, I immediately felt like I was going to fall out of it. For one thing, the setup is very different. They actually have the base mounted to the chair at a 90 degree angle from the way most chairs work. Typically you have the width on the side of you. REI has decided to turn it so that the wide part of the base is actually going front to back. Now what that does is it gives you good stability as far as rocking goes, but the tipping side becomes a lot looser. Further, I noticed that when I sat in it at least, I felt like I could just twist all over the place. I had a lot of play back and forth, I had some play backward and forward, and even just twisting in the chair, I was getting the legs up off the ground, and this was on a perfectly flat, perfectly stable surface. So I could only imagine what it was going to be like on an uneven or a soft surface. So when I sat in the Helinox Chair Zero, I immediately noticed that it was a lot more stable. But the trouble I noticed was that when I got into the position that I like to kind of sit and recline and relax in, I was pushing the chair backwards and I could tell it was going to go over if I went any farther than I already had. So once again, on a perfectly flat, stable surface, I wasn't really sitting in the chair in a flat, stable way. So that resulted in a lot of going back and forth between the two chairs and trying to figure out which version of instability I was more comfortable with. I gave the edge to the Helinox Chair Zero. But then an interesting thing happened. Just to give myself kind of a baseline, I sat in my old $30 chair and felt immediately how much more stable it was than either the REI FlexLite Air or the Helinox Chair Zero. My $30 two pound chair felt like a legitimate outdoor chair. I could lean over any direction, I could tip it back, I could lean forward, and I felt completely stable. So I decided I needed to move on to some other factors. Now, of course, a camp chair is basically just there to make your camping experience more comfortable, and so comfort was gonna be a huge factor. Now, once again, for me, the REI FlexLite Air did not do very well. For one thing, because the chair's seat angle is a little steeper than the Helinox, I was having kind of a band of material pressing up into my legs when I tried to stretch out very much. Now, it was great for sitting up straight with my knees kind of up close, but if I tried to relax very much, I was getting circulation cut off. Further, because the REI FlexLite Air is a little shorter in the back, it was creating a band across my back that just wasn't really where my back wanted it to be. If I leaned back, it was pressing into my spine, and if I leaned forward, it wasn't giving me any support. So I just never really felt like I could relax in the chair as much as I would like. So I sat down in the Helinox Chair Zero, and again, immediately it felt better. For one thing, because the seat angle is lower, more like my cheap sunnier chair, I could stretch my legs out without getting my circulation cut off in my legs, and the band of material was a little bit farther forward, so it just made for a much more comfortable, relaxed sitting posture. Further, the Chair Zero had a higher back, which meant that it was up near my shoulder blades, and that made for a very comfortable backrest. I didn't feel like I was bending over the back of the chair. However, that was not the whole story. Although it was really nice having that taller back on the Helinox, the angle of the top pole supports put them right behind my armpits and kind of dug into my back a little bit. So although I could sit in a single kind of reclined position with my arms in front of me very comfortably, as soon as I tried to move out, I was uncomfortable again. So once again, for a baseline, I sat in the sunnier chair and discovered that although it had a lower angle and a higher back, like the Helinox, the top of the poles were not stabbing me under the arms, and so I was able to freely move around anywhere I wanted to, and I didn't lose any comfort. So when I looked at the three most important factors that mattered to me, what I discovered was that number one, price-wise, obviously the Sun Year annihilated the Helinox and the REI chair because it only cost 30 bucks. Now, unfortunately, my exact chair is not available on Amazon anymore, but there are a ton of these $30, $40 chairs out there. I would recommend looking into two of them. 
One of them is the Moon Lens Chair. I've seen this one crop up on a number of gear review sites that I really respect. So although I've never actually got my hands on one, that seems to be one of the best in the $40 range you might want to look up. And the other is an unusual camp chair by a brand called Shall We. Now this chair is heavier than all of them. It comes in at about 35 ounces, but the interesting thing is that the entire framework is made of metal. So if you're looking for something a bit more durable in that same kind of $40 price range, and you don't mind carrying a few extra ounces, you might want to look into that. What you're clearly giving up is weight. By my measurements, the Sunnier chair comes in at about 30 or 31 ounces, so for all practical purposes, let's just call it two pounds. And given that I was wanting to make this upgrade specifically for the weight savings, it seemed like the Helinox Chair Zero would be the answer. However, I'm looking at dropping $130 for a chair that is less comfortable than the one I already have. The only gain I would make by buying the Helinox Chair Zero would be to save about 14 ounces off of my pack weight. I am just not sure that losing those 14 ounces is worth losing some comfort and losing $130. This is a luxury item. It's not gonna go with me on an ultralight through hiking type situation. So for me right now, it's probably just not in the cards to keep either the REI Flex Light Air or the Helinox Chair Zero. I'm just going to stick with my trusty old $30 camp chair. I'm just going to have to eat those 14 ounces and deal with the fact that it's going to be a little heavier. But for now, the money and the comfort are worth it. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Definitely check out my other gear upgrade video and some of the new stuff for 2022 if you are interested in what I'm doing this year. I'll be doing more of these in the future, but until next time, I'm Doug. Thanks for watching.